spoof, kind of like Robert Townsend's The Bold, The Black, and The Beautiful. It's very, very funny and borderline ridiculous. It's about a cosmetic company uh, run by a father and his two sons, and my character, Jessica, is the VP of sales. And Midnight Blue really came into fruition when um, Bobby Martis uh, basically decided, yes, I'll rewrite the script and I'll direct it. And fortunately, uh, we have Bobby here. I think he's doing an exceptionally good job. I think the picture is going to be very funny. It's an outlandish comedy send-up along the lines of a black dynasty or reminiscent of Robert Townsend's The Bold, The Black, The Beautiful. And as uh, some viewers might know, uh, Bobby was actually part of the Partners in Crime group that Robert created. So he's the perfect person to really bring this kind of interpretation to the screen. Several weeks before the release of this product, Tom, my idiot younger brother, uh, because of some his gambling problem and and he has uh, uh, an old lover that is is after him uh, and is going to ruin him and ruin the family. Have you ever suffered for nine months and then had to push out a seven pound object through a whole one third its size? Uh, no, but... Then I don't think you do. Uh. Yeah, why does everyone want to hit me? And this time, the right man is right under her very nose and she doesn't recognize it. It's a little warm in here. Oh. Oh. Ah. They have two weeks to get this new product going and they have to raise $500,000. And so there's all of this intrigue going on and then uh, in the midst of all of that, uh, I fall in love. Is that Nikki? Yeah, that'd be her. You know, but something funny is going on with her. I don't know what it is. Uh, I have a BA from Spelman. I graduated at the top of my class at Harvard B School, but my entire life has been filled with nothing but bad choices in men. I, I have no talent in that area. At what time is it? 3.20. And what happens at 3.20? The fine mamma jamma gets her body massage. What are you waiting for? Oh, what is that? Uh, a large set of keys. Film Midnight Blue is a comedy, and it's about this woman who's a woman scorned. And you know that saying, nothing is something about a woman scorned, you know, it's a very famous saying. So I have to get back at the man that scorned me. He scorched me and he scorned me. Tom is, Tom is the Mac. Tom is the Mac of all Macs. And uh, you know, uh, the only problem is that sometimes it seems like his brain and his ego are competing for space. So, but he, he's, he's a likable guy and you can see why he gets away with some of the stuff he gets away with. and you can see why he doesn't get away with a lot of the things that he ends up not getting away with. What the hell is going on here? Oh, baby. What you doing back so early? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Well, um, what it is, is Midnight Blue is a cosmetic company and um, they are having some really difficult times and they're about to start to launch a new perfume. So Nikki comes on board at the beginning and becomes sort of really like in with everybody who needs, like all the bosses and Jessica who, who's the, one of the presidents, she's her assistant and works in accounting and all of a sudden there's, there's somebody's embezzling money from this company and we find out that it's one of the brothers that owns the company, he's gambling. I give the actors the flexibility to, um, if they wanted to paraphrase that was fine but most of them actually said things verbatim, but when there, were, there, was time, there were times that we, we had to play. We didn't have to play, but we wanted to play, and that, therefore we can discover 
other things, other comical things. Um, uh, for example, Roy Fagan does this. <clears throat> I, I wrote in a lap dance uh, on the boat, and he does this very funny lap dance uh, with Ellen Claghorn. And uh, um, there's one thing that, that kind of came up that uh, we just used. It, he couldn't get his, un, his belt unbuckled and his shoe um, um, taken off. And uh, the music kept going. And he, just, he would do his little thing. Oh, excuse me, one second. And he would, it was just hilarious. Jim Beamer is basically a guy who does whatever Miss Laura says. And he does it for a couple of reasons. One, he has to pay his mortgage. Two, he loves money. You know, it's pretty funny. I think just about everything I do, people laugh at me. So <laughs> I have to like really change my look and everything to kind of fool people for, from who I am for them to kind of um, uh, believe me and, and take me as a bad guy. Because I've done so much comedy and stuff that people just start laughing when they see me. Jim Beamer, kick them all to this story. If you owe us money, he'll toss you a salad. I thought I was a serious actor when I went to college, but... <laughs> Bobby is hilarious, and Bobby actually played a part. Um, uh, he sang a gospel song and was so hilarious. I know, I know the man is gone, cause he, 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 he ain't coming back no more. Has anybody seen my old cousin? Does anybody know where my cousin at? I, 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 I don't know where my cousin at. Whoops, there he is. I, 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 I. Definitely hands on. He is in there. He is showing the actors exactly what he wants, exactly how he wants it. And he says, I don't want to give you a line reading. And then he proceeds to, you know, give you a line reading, which is, <laughs> which is so funny. Hey, did you say Nikki was there? Yeah. Oh, man, peep this. Bubba was out with a two weeks ago, and his shit is burnt up. Medical emergency, man. Zip it up. Get out of there now. Uh, 